Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to my channel. I'll be reading today Luke chapter 16, verse 8. And the Lord commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Christ did not say that believers are dumb and that unsaved people are wiser than believers. That's not what he said. What Christ said here is, is that unsaved people tend to be wiser in their generation. Look at the context in their generation. So when it comes to worldly manners, of course, worldly people are wiser than believers because it's their world. They have to know how it operates. So let me give a parable to you. Let's say you have a neighborhood somewhere in Peru. I'm just picking up picking a country here. But this neighborhood is haunted by crime. And there is this young woman called Elizabeth living there. She is 19 years old. She walks around at ease. And some people begin to ask her, Elizabeth, how can you walk around at ease in this town? Then she picked her purse and she revealed her small handgun. And she said, I know how to use this. And she picked a small bottle from, from her purse also. She said, this is the potion I'm using. The witch doctor has um, charmed this and I'm using it. It scares off people with bad energies. And if there's someone with really heavy energy, I still have my gun. Here's the thing. I'm not supporting what this Elizabeth is doing. Absolutely not. Because it's paranormal. It's dangerous. However, in her case, she doesn't have any better. She doesn't know any better. Because even some of the so-called believers were really not believers, but churchgoers in her area are into witchcraft. However, she realizes she needs to survive every day. If something bad happens to her, the world will continue as if she never existed. She knew that very well. So she knew she needs to look after herself. She can't depend upon someone else. So in her generation, she was wise enough to know what's going on. She found out that there are many curses on the city where she lives. And she realized she needs to have some cover. That is why she has her job. She goes to college and she is walking around at ease and nobody harms her. There are many frustrated men walking out there that try to sexually harass her. But the potion worked. The demons pushed them away. And because those men are already in the negative, other demons are cooperating. That is why Elizabeth had so much ease. Well, other women of her age often had to look out or had a to certain places. This Elizabeth was wise in her generation. That is what Christ meant. She was very practical. She knew that she couldn't defend herself with a gun nor with a knife. She knew she wouldn't be able to, she wouldn't be able to be alert all the time. So why did I give this parable? It is because even worldly people often are not that wise. Okay, let's look now at another example. There was this guy called Jeff and he grew up in a cult. He later left the cult because he thought I don't want to live like this. And he was at his right mind. The cult was indeed um, into weird stuff and it was very restrictive. But when Jeff was living outside the cult, he noticed that many people out there thought they were smart by so-called um, living their own lives. But Jeff realized that his parents, his relatives and those other people that belonged to that cult, they had some practical understanding. Now Jeff did not approve that they were a cult. He did not approve their, um, I'm saying their, their remote way of living. He realized that those people had some understanding. For example, Jeff never faced violence when he was growing up. Why not? Because everyone in the neighborhood was part of that cult. They were economically dependent on that cult. So if any of them would have acted out of line, they wouldn't have any income. 
and all the other cult members would avoid them, so they would be left alone to die of hunger because nobody would look after them. So, because of this, people behaved. And because we're dependent on the cult economically, they couldn't go very far. So their marriage partners came from within the environment, from within the cult also. Because of this, everyone had things in common, and the community functioned well. And Jeff realized that this was practical understanding. And Jeff realized that many corporations out there don't call themselves cults, but they're really cults. He realized that many of those corporations where grad students, after they finish college, go to work are cults. Once you work at, at such a firm, or say corporation or company, whatever you want to call it, once you work over there, your life is sucked into the organization. Everything's about organization. You, you lose most of your time, of your day at the organization. So you, you become like the organization. You, you've joined a cult without being aware of it. But you think, I'm just going to my job. I'm a responsible adult. No, you've been led into a cult without you being aware of it. And probably your life partner or your spouse will also be associated with the cult group or with a similar cult. That is why many of those corporations, firms, or companies can last for so long. Because the owners of those corporations, firms, or companies, they go to the paranormal. And the demons explain to them how the human brain operates and how people operate in groups. So they practice the knowledge that demons hand out to them in their organization and it affects the employees. And that's how the employees form a team, whether they like each other or not, and that's how the company works. Because the owners out of corporations, they know very well that all those people that work for them carry heavy energy with them because most of them don't follow Christ. They know very well that any time that heavy energy can escalate, they know that people of the world long for relief and for comfort. So in their organization, they produce a kind of comfort of conformity in which everyone is at ease. And there are times they will use one of their own employees as a scapegoat to accomplish this. Why it works? So, what I'm saying here is that worldly people that are practical are wiser in their generation. And here's what Christ meant. Those people that go to the paranormal to get assistance, I'm not talking about people that go to the paranormal to harm others. You have many of those types of people out there, witches, war, warlocks, all of that. They go just to, not always, but often just go to vent on other people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who realize they need assistance. That's not natural and they're practical about it. Such people get things done. Now what they're doing is not always ethical. What they're doing may be even questionable or objectable. But they say they have the reasons for what they're doing and they do. Often they don't intend to harm anyone but they know that you need to be alert and manipulative in this world to keep danger away from you. They know that narcissistic personalities exist that want to will whatever they will. They know that. And they know that once people have agreed against you, very likely people are not going to give up. So now you need to deal with that. So that's why you have people that are chronic people's pleasers. What's going on? Such people are either covert witches or covert warlocks that use paranormal charms so that people like them. Because they know when people like you and comfortable around you, they tend to cooperate with you. And they know once people turn on you, it's not likely they will give it up. So they want to prevent people turning on them. That's why they're using charms. And here's the thing, they know very well that if they don't use any power on other, on other people, they would have to find a way to deal with whatever people will. And they don't want to be dependent on having to deal and react based on other people's will. They want to have influence on their circumstances. So they are practical. And this is what amazes me. Not amazing me in a positive sense. Let me say this is what shocks me. 
a lot of people that claim to follow Christ, they are not practical. Absolutely not. Either they have this going to heaven mentality, in which they want to flee from all difficulties during this lifetime, or they have this um, warlock mentality that they want to take everything in their own hands in the name of Christ, but that's also a trap. Or they just join some organization where there's a local church or some mission and they get along. I mean, many people that claim to follow Christ, I'm not sure if they, re if they are really born again or not. They say they are believers, okay, so let's assume they are believers. They're not practical. They are not practical at all. At least those that have no hope, who are lost, who are in, the ne in darkness, at least those that are awake, those in darkness are awake, because most people in darkness, they're asleep, but those that are awake, they're practical. And here's the thing, evildoers, like um, scammers, or narcissistic psychopaths, they are practical also. How can it be that those outside of Christ tend to be more practical than those in Christ. That should not be so. Well, I just want to tell you here, be practical. Be wise as serpents, as Christ told us. That's why I'm telling you to look at the bigger picture. That being said, be at, be at peace.